Edexcel Decision 1, Critical Path Analysis 3, Resource Histograms and Scheduling. Constructing a Resource Histogram. So we have an activity network, as you can see in the top right hand corner. And below we have a cascade chart, also known as a Gantt diagram, for this network. So all activities are placed at their earliest start times and the float is shown with dotted lines. So this space here is known as the float. Remember that the float is the number of days that these activities can be delayed without delaying the whole project. Also remember that this top row here represents the critical path. So anything delayed in the critical path will delay the whole project. Okay, so here's our Gantt diagram. If each activity requires one worker and all activities start at their earliest start times, as the diagram shows, how many people are needed for this project? Well, if we look at this Gantt chart, we can just look on each day at the activities that take place. So, for example, this here represents day one, and two workers are required on day one. So, this here represents day 12 and if we look down at day 12 we can see that we need one, two, three, four workers and then if we look over here at day 28 we can see that we require two workers. So even though we can see from this Gantt chart how many people are needed for this project, so a resource histogram helps us visualise this and makes it easier for us to work out how many workers are required on a given day. It could also relate to any resources. It doesn't just have to be workers. So we are going to focus on workers in these examples. So we've already seen some examples where we've considered what resources are required for a project. And we know that one way to help with this is to draw a resource histogram. So a histogram essentially shows the number of workers active at any given time. This can be useful to help determine an efficient use of resources and to develop a schedule for a project. A schedule essentially lists the work required for each worker. Okay, so to draw a resource histogram, we've just got to follow a few rules. The number of workers required to complete an activity will be given. If not, assume only one worker. We always use the earliest start times, unless otherwise stated. We always build the bars up from the bottom, and there must never be any holes or overhangs. And this will become clear as we go through our example. OK, so this is the same Gantt diagram we had earlier also known as a cascade chart. And we're going to use this cascade chart to draw our resource histogram. So what we do is we just look along the axes and we're going to call this the number of days. So we can see that from 0 to 8, so for the first 8 days, we only require 2 workers. So on our diagram, we can draw in both A and B up to 8. So we've got A and B. And it's really useful to label your blocks or bars as you go along. So we can see that B hasn't finished, so we're going to continue with B. B finishes on day 11. So B, we can't continue B where it is because otherwise we've got an overhang. So we can continue B down here. So B has three more days. And then we can see at day 8, C has also started. And C goes on to day 17. So we can draw C here. And then we continue down the bottom to day 17. It's important to also note that I could have drawn B 
on the bottom and A above. So I could have switched A and B, and that is also a valid answer. It doesn't matter where you draw your activities, what matters is the overall shape of the histogram. So again here, I could have drawn B at the top and C underneath if I'd drawn C first. So we've done, I'm going to tick these off as we go along. So we've done A, we've done B, and we've done C. So D also starts on day 8. So we're going to draw, and D goes on to day 20. So we're going to draw D next. So day 8. So we've got to stop at 11 at the moment. We've got to go down to the row below. D is at 17, then I've got to go down to the row below. And we're going to 20, so we're going to D. So we've done D. Okay, and then we go to day 11, the end of day 11, and we've got F. And F continues to day 19. So I draw F to 17. And we move down a row to 19. And that should be at 19. Okay, so I've done F, and then G also starts at day 11 and finishes at 16. So G starts at day 11 and finishes at 16, like so. And then E started at 17. So E starts at 17 and goes along to 21. So 17 to 19, then 19 to 20 here. And then 20 to 21 on the bottom row. Then we've got H and I both start on day 21. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to choose to draw H first because it's the critical path. No other reason. H can go to 26, and actually, straight after H could be J. So I'm going to draw J in. So H and J, and then I is 21. To day 29. So I is 21 to day 29. So as we can see here, there is a gap that's allowed. It's not classed as a hole because a hole would mean that there'd be a bar above it. So that's okay. Like I said previously, the shape of this has to be correct, but whether you put, for example, H and J on top of I or I below, that doesn't matter. So I could have drawn the critical path all along, along the bottom first, and that is also fine, as long as the overall shape is okay. So here we have a neat version of my histogram, and you can see I've labelled all the cells individually. You can label them all individually, or you can label them as blocks. But what's important to note is that I've outlined all the bars in the histogram, as you can see here, so that we can easily see the overall shape. So if we look at any given day now, we can say definitely how many workers are required. So for example, on day five, we know that two workers are required. And actually, it'd be really helpful if we do a scale along our Y axis. So two workers required on day five. And then, for example, day 14, we've got four workers. And at day 21, we've only got one worker. And in the final two days, we've also only required one worker. So it's not always the case that only one worker is required for each task. And in this network, we can see below. We are given a table that tells us how many workers are required for each of the tasks. And as we can see, each task requires more than one worker. So we're going to draw a resource histogram for the following network. And actually, it would be really helpful if we first identify the critical path. So the critical path... looks like it is A to B, E, H, and then up to I. So we're going to draw a resource histogram using the earliest start time, and we are going to label 
our y-axis is the number of workers, assuming every cell is represents one. So again, it's really important to remember that we aren't allowed any holes or any overhangs in our diagram. Okay, so it's going to be useful to draw the critical path along the axes. So we're going to start with A, and we can see that A requires three workers. So we do this along to A, and we can see from the network that A has a duration of two days. So we draw my block and I'll label it A. And I'm going to tick off A so that I remind myself I've done it. So my next activity, my critical path is B. B has a duration of four days and requires four workers. So from two to six, and it requires four workers. So we're going to draw a bar from two to six at a height of four. And again, I'm going to label that B. And then I'm going to go to activity E because it's part of the critical path. We can see that E has a duration of nine days and two workers. So six plus nine is 15. So we're going to go to 15, and it only has 2, so we just go up to 2, and we draw a block, and label it E. And next in our critical path is H, so I'm going to tick off H, because we're going to draw that next. Duration of 3, and a height of 2, because it requires 2 workers, so 15 plus 3 is 18, so that is H, with only 2 workers. And then last, but not least, I has a duration of two days with three workers so the bar requires a height of three and then we finish at 20 days and there's I. So next we want to just take each activity in turn really so C starts on day two according to our activity network so C starts on day two with two workers and it has a duration of seven days. So two workers means our bar goes up to six. So seven days, so we've got one, two, three, four days here. And that is C. We can't draw C, the rest of C out here because that would be an overhang. So we need to drop it down. So we've got three days left. So we put C in that block. So the next two activities to start are D or F that we haven't considered yet. I'm just going to consider D because it's in alphabetical order. So that starts on day six, has a duration of seven and four workers. So it starts on day six, so six is here, has four workers. So initially we go up to eight. We can only do that for three of the seven days. That's D. And then for the remaining four days, go along to six. And that's D. And then for F, it has a starts on day six, duration of three with three workers. It starts on day six, duration of three with three workers. So it finishes on day nine. And then last but not least, G. So if we go over to G, we know G starts on day 9. It has a duration of 7 days and 3 workers. So on day 9, G starts with 3 workers. So for 4 of those 9 days, we can draw a bar there. So for the remaining 3 days, we draw G down here. So here we have our resource histogram, and our histogram shows the number of workers required on any given day. So we can see here on day one, we only need three workers to start with. We can see on day six, if we go up, we require six workers. And we can see that at the end, 
on the last day, again, we only require three workers. Now on this diagram, which days require the most number of workers? So we can see that the most number of workers required is for three days, and it's 11 workers, and these are required on days 7, 8 and 9. Histogram. In the next session we'll be looking at levelling resource histograms.